Hello everybody, quick shout out video here from Bicotic. I was busy beavering away on a new video at Bicotic HQ when suddenly my inbox pinged and I got a comment through from Steve saying could you do a comparison of 2022 models Trekimonda SL6, Specialized Tarmac SL7, Specialized Roubaix Comp and the BMC Road Machine SLR4 all have the new SRAM rival ETAP access group set. Thanks. Okay, so that's what we'll have a look at. I've taken all the latest versions from the manufacturer's websites. Presumably they're 2022, but they don't really say. So let's get on with it. Okay, before we get stuck into this, let's just have a look at the different tiers of group set from SRAM. And on this slide here, we're just looking at the crank sets. And the top tier, most expensive, is red. Middle tier is force. And the cheapest wireless electronic shifting group set from SRAM is Rival. As you can see, the price is a lot lower there. All these crank sets on the left don't have a power meter and the ones on the right do have a power meter. Red and Force, you can tell there's a power meter because of this little plastic bit sticking out here with a Q on it, Q for Quark. And on the Rival crank set, the Q is just in the middle there. These prices came off the SRAM website and for some reason they're in Euros. Don't really know why that is when I'm looking at it from the UK. However, 360 euros for a double crank set with a power meter seems like relatively good value to me, especially when you consider the red one is 1,200 euros. However, it would be a miss to not compare the SRAM Rival ETAP Access group set to something else. In this instance, I've chosen Shimano 105, which is Shimano's third tier group set. Now granted, you can't get an electronic shifting version of 105. It's purely mechanical, so cables changing the gears. But despite that, I do think these are comparable. So let's have a look. Clearly Rival is quite a lot more expensive and actually a lot heavier. But the pros are it's 12 speed, of course, depending on your opinion of 12 speed. And bear in mind that SRAM have a 10 tooth sprocket as their smallest sprocket and the jury's out as to whether that's a good idea or not. It's fully wireless electronic shifting, which means there's literally no cables between any of the components. So fitting it on your bike is super easy. And as I mentioned earlier, the power meter is relatively cheap. I just Googled the stages left crank arm power meter for 105 and the best price I can see on that is £269. That's just for the crank arm. So the cons, well, it is expensive and it's pretty heavy. These figures here came off a Cycling Weekly review of these two group sets. And if that's to be believed, the rival group set is literally like bolting on five extra stems to your bike. Now, if you're any kind of weight weenie, that's going to freak you out. So I'll let you decide on that one. Comment down below what your thoughts are. And you will need an XDR free hub to be able to fit the 12 speed cassette. OK, so here are the bikes in question. We have the Amonda SL6, the Specialized Tarmac SL7 Comp, the Specialized Roubaix Comp, and the BMC Road Machine 4. Now, Steve, I know you asked me to look at the blue and gray version, but unfortunately on the UK website, the only one I can see is this rather luminous yellow version. Yummy. So I thought we'd start off with the top of the range in Monda. And I made a video back in July of 2020 about the whole new Amonda range. And I was absolutely blown away with this bike when it first came out. I thought it looked delicious. And as these things do over time, the shine has gone off a little bit for me on this bike. Don't get me wrong, I still definitely like this top of the range version. Maybe not quite as much as I did way back when I made that video. But in this video, it's actually the SL6 Rival ETAP Access version we're looking at, which is this one here. And yes, the first thing that stands out is I I do rather like this colour, I think. But on this cheaper version, we've gone to a much more conventional stem. And I'm not so chuffed with that. I find this all looks a bit weird now. Certainly not as nice as the one-piece bar stem on the expensive version. But really, the elephant in the room is up here. It's £4,200. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's 8.69 kilograms. It's a bit of a unit. And the strap line on the Trek website is crazy light. And obviously, in this instance, I think we'd have to call them out on that. That is definitely not crazy light. You do have to appreciate the fact that Trek do actually list their weights. So at least they're transparent in that respect. And in fact, all the parts like the seat post, the seat, the stem, bars, wheels, tires, 
on the listing for the bike there's actually a link for each part that you can click through to and see the weight and the price for each part so fair play to trek i like that they are the most transparent manufacturer in that respect you try and get the weight of any of the specialized bikes it's completely impossible a couple of things of note on this bike it does have a power meter i'll tell you now that none of the other three have a power meter it's got carbon wheels again none of the other three have carbon wheels what does bug me a little bit is it's got pretty cheap tires on it these tires retail for about 27 quid each so definitely not bontrager's fastest rolling tires which maybe you'd expect for 4200 pounds and there's a lot made of the aero capabilities of this bike and in that respect i do have to question the round seat tube round being the worst aerodynamic shape there is pretty much i would question whether actually you're better off with the sl6 ultegra mechanical quite a bit cheaper and quite a bit lighter apart from that basically the same bike so maybe that is a better option having said all that maybe actually looking out for a second hand version of the old rim brake imonda sl6 is a better idea this retail for 2.2 and is a good chunk lighter so you could definitely upgrade these aluminium wheels and lose a lot more weight on that so if you're looking for a lightweight climbing bike maybe that's what you should be looking for comment down below okay so the next bike on steve's list was a specialized sl7 comp rival etap access good chunk more expensive 300 pounds there's no power meter on this one i like the color though pretty snazzy and the stem that comes with this bike is basically the same stem that comes on the top of the range tarmac sl7 and maybe one day you would think about upgrading to the specialized s works aero fly 2 bar the aero bar that you find on the top of the range tarmac of the four bikes that we look at the tarmac has the most integrated cables here so the most neat and tidy although the trek is kind of integrated a bit again we've got a set of tires that retail about 27 pounds each so again not specialized fastest rolling rubber which I don't know why but that really bugs me when I'm paying that much money and the other thing on this bike that does bug me and I've talked about these before is the R470 wheels now this rim here from DT Swiss retails for about 30 quid so by the time you pop these wheels together they're going to be cheap as chips and on a bike for four and a half thousand pounds yeah I, I think you deserve something a bit better but there we go what I did forget to mention is that these carbon wheels on the Trek retail for about 800 pounds and they weigh 1.7 kilograms so probably not the lightest in the world but I suspect better than these ones what I probably should have mentioned at the beginning of this video is that the SL7 tarmac and the Imonda are both full-blown race bikes these are in the pro peloton and you should probably consider these if you are considering doing a bit of racing or a lot of fast-paced group riding however the next bike up the Roubaix is much more of an endurance type bike and if we fade between the two here you can see the front of the Roubaix is a lot higher up sat on top of this what for me is a rather ugly contraption that has a bit of suspension in it I have to admit I'm not mad keen on that and then also this rather weird square bit at the back again that's not my cup of tea but this is much more of an endurance bike so somewhat more comfy than your full-blown race bike again this comes with these dt swiss r470 wheels it's 4400 pounds and as i said earlier getting the weight of any of the specialized bikes is very difficult we're going to have to imagine that these bikes weigh similar to the Amonda, I guess. So come on Specialized, start listing your weights. I'm fed up with having to try and trawl the website, trying to find the weights for these bikes. So that would be much appreciated. Again, the same as the Tarmac, this comes with the Turbo Pro tires, retailing for about £27 each. So the next bike Steve wanted me to look at is the BMC Road Machine 4. Here it is fading between that and the Roubaix. And Steve was hoping that I would look at a blue grey version of this bike, but with the SRAM rival, I couldn't find that colour. All I could find was this Illuminous Yellow, which for me personally is a deal breaker. I can't bear it. I think it looks horrendous. Fully exposed cables on this, same as the Roubaix. 
not mad keen on that saddle or that seat post looks a bit weird to me and trying to do some research on this bike what really bugged me was that the wheels are listed as the bmc xrd slash 522 that's literally all they write and if you type that into google you get nothing i'm guessing it's aluminium you can't really tell it doesn't say what it's made of it's like surely there should be some more information about the components but nope and lo and behold these Vittorio Rubino tires cost about 27 pounds so these manufacturers are all in league with each other and it actually turns out that the Road Machine 4 is the most expensive of all four of these bikes 4550 pounds that's a lot of money to pay for a bright yellow bicycle. So BMC have this bike listed as their endurance bike and it's actually got a slacker head angle than the tarmac and a slightly longer wheelbase. So in conclusion for this video, I have to admit any bike equipped with SRAM rival ETAP axis wouldn't really be on my shopping list. I am a bit of a weight weenie. I, I would feel hard done by. But if you force me to put these bikes into some kind of order, well, the BMC, I just can't cope with that color. The Roubaix, I just can't cope with that funny thing there and that funny thing there. So I'm out on that one. The Tarmac, yep. I like the tarmac and the Amanda comes pretty close to the tarmac. So if I arrange those in order, this is how it comes out. Fourth place for the BMC, third place for the Roubaix, second place for the Amanda, and in first place, yep, it's the tarmac. If I had to have one of these, that would be my bike of choice. So there we go. Let me know how you get on, Steve. Let us know which one you go with. And as ever, leave a comment down below. Let us know which order you'd put them in. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time.